good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Whether you're joining us live or watching a recording, it's great to have you watching. My name is Matt Fowler. I'm a Franchise Recruitment Manager here at Service Master, and I support all prospective franchisees, uh, sorry, prospective franchise partners to understand what, which of our five brands is the right one for them to join. Merry Maids is the global leader in domestic cleaning with over 40 years experience and more than 500 global locations. And I'm delighted that we've got Tom Jackson here today to talk about his story. Our model is built on regular reoccurring revenue with 90% of that revenue coming from customers having weekly, fortnightly or four weekly cleans. We're also the only UK domestic cleaning brand to align with the Alzheimer's Society and their understanding dementia training for all of our maids, which all helps to provide a strong customer demand and provides a fantastic opportunity for our customers and franchise partners alike. So as I said, today I'm joined by Tom Jackson. Uh, Tom has over 20 years experience as a Merry Maids franchise partner. He had the highest Merry Maids franchise partner revenue of more than £770,000 in 2023 and was awarded Merry Maids franchise partner of the year for 2023 at our Spring Forward conference. So I think to open it up, Tom, um, can you give us a little bit of a snapshot of your life before you became a Merry Maids franchise partner? Um, yeah, I suppose I, um, I, I'd always managed other people's businesses um, prior to becoming a Merry Maids owner, um, which is great in some respects because it's a, it's a and, you know weekly salary, monthly salary. Um, but I did feel that by doing that, it was working evenings, it was working weekends. Um, I think the main thing I got out of it was that no matter how much effort you put in working for somebody else, yeah. you don't get any extra benefits out of it, where I think... By running a, your own business, particularly a franchise where you've got the support of a, of a head office um, or a franchise centre, that you have that support and by putting the extra effort in, you get the results out at the end. Yeah, perfect. And that experience that you had in, in the sort of employment, were you in a particular field? Was there something you were doing? Were you in domestic cleaning? No, not at all. Um, I mean, I was in gaming um, okay. for, for a while um, and then I was a customer service manager for a car dealership. Um, so some saying sort of totally different, really, yeah. um, in terms of where it was, what it, you know, the industry. Um, but I suppose I'd got management backgrounds that helped me develop this business. Yeah. Um, and I suppose I always knew with Merry Maids that I was never going to be cleaning. Yeah. You know, I always wanted a managed business where, you know, our staff would go out. They would obviously do the work, do the cleaning. Um, and obviously, I'd be able to manage those teams of cleaners and manage the customers. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, actually. Um, so this is very much a, a management franchise, as, as Correct, yeah. your, your lived experience shows. So when we're looking for franchise partners, we're not necessarily looking for people that have clean experience. They've been in uh, domestic clean at all. And you know, your prime example of that coming from something of very different in its background. Yeah. Um, but being able to take that management skill, uh, managing people, and bringing that into a business, as you say, where you can um, uh, you can you can see the, the full benefit of it. Um, when you were in that employed environment, then, and you were looking at other opportunities, um, what is it that particularly drove you to move into a franchise business? Um, I think for me, um, yes, you can start your own business. Yes, you can go out and, and it can be Tom's cleaning. Um, but I just felt that the franchise model is a sort of halfway house between working for somebody and taking a salary and this is you, you do what you're told to do yeah. um, or being your own boss and your own this is your business alone and I thought that being a franchise was a sort of a good halfway house yeah. um, that you get the support um, both from the network you know from yeah. the other franchisees and both from you know yourselves at, at Service Master you get that support from everybody really um, and it's the best of both worlds so it's your business. So if you want to take a day off, you obviously need, you can take a day off. If yep. you're happy with the business and you push it forward, it's down to you to do that. But I thought there was still that benefit and the backup of, of a head office sort of thing yeah. behind you. Having a function and having, you. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and then marketing. I mean, the, the marketing department here is fantastic. Um, you know, and if that was Tom's cleaning, I wouldn't be able to get anywhere near... The, the sort of benefit that we get from being part of a, a franchise network. Yeah. Um, again, with Alzheimer's, you know, they, they wouldn't partner at all with Tom's Cleaning. It, yeah. it, it's the brands yeah. that, that have pushed that forward. So you, you mentioned that a couple of times there about, you know, the, 
the benefits that you've seen of um, being part of a network versus setting up um, Tom's Cleaning, as, as, yeah. as you've named it. Um, before you were deciding whether franchising was the right route for you, what sort of research were you undertaking? What type of things were you um, were you doing? I appreciate it was yeah. 20, 20 years ago. Yeah. You've got to cast your mind back. Yeah. Right? So I suppose, um, I mean, I did go to the, the, obviously some of the road shows. You know, there's, there was one at NEC, one in Manchester. I'm sure there's one in London. So I suppose I did that research to look what, what was out there. Um, I suppose I decided on Merry Maids because I felt it, it was the right fit for what I wanted out of life. Um, and it was that work-life balance. You know, in, in the previous jobs that I'd had, it was evenings, it was weekends, you know, some of the bank holidays. Um, whereas I think with Merry Maids, typically the staff are out working 9 till 3.30. Um, Monday to Friday, there's no bank holidays, there's no weekends. So I thought the, the Merry Maids fit was, was absolutely fantastic in terms of sort of, you know, uh, my growing family, you know, my, yeah. my son's now 21 yeah. um, and he was going to nursery at seven o'clock in the morning, coming back at seven o'clock at night. And I knew if I didn't do something, that wouldn't change. Yeah. It's, was it that lifestyle factor alongside the wanting to see the fruits of your labour and the efforts that you were putting in um, that drove your decision to move into franchising? Yeah, it was. And, and I think, again, I did look at other franchise franchisors yeah. um, you know and I just felt that the Merry Maids brand and the Merry Maid product um, fitted what I wanted out of my life and, and sort of my growing family um, and yeah it, as I said it was Monday to Friday nine to five but you also had the backup of, of, of you know service master behind you yeah. to sort of push it forward yeah perfect um, be interesting just to hear um, you mentioned obviously about the support that you, you were looking for when you were um, deciding on a, on a franchise brand. How much support do you get as a as a franchise partner, and how has that changed as you've become more established and your business has become more profitable? Um, I think the, the the biggest benefit currently at, at sort of my size of business is the marketing department. Um, you know the Google, the Alzheimer's Society, um, some of the initiatives they come up with. Um, I wouldn't do those myself if it was just my cleaning business. So I actually think the the marketing department is is fantastic at, at doing something like that. Um, I think the making sure that the you're doing things correctly as well in terms of a, a business is very good within Merry Maids. That you know, there's obviously things that you need to follow, things to make sure that you're doing correctly. Um, how are things changed? I think as initial franchisee. Um, there's a massive amount of more support when you're like a brand new franchisee, um, both from head office or service master, yep. and also the other franchisees. Um, you know, we, we've got um, a lady that started up at Mercy, that started a franchise recently, and I still probably talk to her probably once every couple of weeks, and she's been down to visit us a number of times. So I think now it's different that maybe now we're imparting our knowledge yep. to other people. Yeah. I think that's that's an interesting point you make there, Tom, because one of the things that I um, talk about quite regularly when I'm talking to prospective franchise partners is about the value of having that network of others um, yeah. that have already trodden that path that you're you're about to go and tread. It's all well and good having the, the franchise or as your support function, um, but actually having a really cohesive and supportive uh, network of peers yeah. um, is also really, really powerful. So the fact that you took value from that and you're now able to pass your um, knowledge forward to other yeah. um, new in entrants to the, to the Merry Maids um, brand, I think is, is a really, really powerful thing. And one thing that probably when you're first looking at an opportunity, you perhaps don't appreciate, you'll have come from being part of a team, being part of yeah. a, a business, yeah, yeah. you know, if you can come from an employed capacity where you're used to having that around you and you probably take it for granted. And it's not until you make that step into self-employment and you're owning your own business where if that's not there from the rest of the network, then you can feel quite lonely. Yeah, um, yeah. And you haven't suddenly got that sounding board of people to talk to and that knowledge, which, um, you know, it's great to hear that you've got that in Merry Maids and that we, we were able to provide that um, for anyone that's, that's thinking about yeah. um, an opportunity. You've touched a couple of times on the, um, the marketing piece and the value that you've, you've been able to take from that. Just talk a little bit about what support and guidance they, they've been able to provide to you. Um, so at the moment we, we have like regular marketing meetings um, that will I think it's usually once a month um, that'll be at like a, an online meeting um, to talk through you know we're going through this process at the moment this is how we might be able to 
increased marketing on Google. This might be like a, I don't know, um, a leaflet drops. This might be how we're marketing in this business that, that's working. So I suppose um, it, it's, it's like a monthly regular meetings that does make you focus on your business a little bit more yeah. um, rather than just head down and, and keep going. Yeah. It is, you know, that taking time out probably once a month with the people from marketing yeah. um, and having that meeting means you step up and think, actually, how can I improve? How can I get my, my business to the next level? I guess it's that piece about um, taking the expertise of somebody that's got knowledge in an area where yeah. perhaps you haven't quite got the, the same level of experience. Um, but also, so you're, you're hearing best practice and you're hearing yeah. um, sort of how things should be done. I guess there's a degree of accountability as well on those calls where you're offering up the type of activity that you're going to take forward and the things that you're going to do. And because you kind of aired that to everyone, there's a degree of, okay, I've got to follow through on it now, which, you know, the adverse effect of that is that yeah. it has the positive um, not going to effect. Yeah. Not going to affect yeah. the business. So. And again, I suppose um, I am quite competitive, so I will have my own personal targets that, that we want to achieve. Um, as you said, you know, we're, we're the biggest merry maids in, in the UK at the moment, and we want to keep it that way. And, you know, we've got a couple of other businesses that are growing, yeah. and I, you know, me and my, my team, we want to keep that distance and we want to keep pushing our own business forward. Um, but I suppose the biggest benefit, again, of a franchise network is we're not in competition with Gina in Wakefield or Nikki in Blackpool. It's they're quite happy to share things that have worked for them. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's best practice across the network. It yeah. works across the board because, you know, we're not going to steal their customers. We all want to grow at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, one of the, the other um, sort of common questions that I, I get when I'm talking to somebody for the first time in those early um, conversations is about, you know, where's my business going to come from? How am I going to market it? How am I going to take on those first few clients? When you were first starting your business, can you think back to how you um, uh, found your first few clients and just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think um, the first few clients were leaflets. Um, again, it, it was you know a leaflet drop, which I think is, is generally how you know the the sort of a brand new franchisee sort of starts. It'll be a leaflet drop. Um, it's getting your name onto Google, um, but I think. 20 years ago it was really leaflets yeah. so it's it's about you know we took on two members of staff um you know we were out there pounding the streets dropping leaflets trying to get our first customer second customer um and, and sort of build it from there um i think the customers now come from various ways you know it's it's google um, local marketing um word of mouth is really good because yeah. obviously after 20 years of, of cleaning people's houses there's a lot of people out there recommending us um, but yeah, initially it was it was leaflets. Yeah, and I think that is that you know we have that marketing support function. So for anyone that is new coming into to the network, um, they will get time with the marketing manager for uh, Merry Maids, and they will take that time and they'll plan out what their marketing journey is going yeah. to, to look like over those first twelve months, and then help them and be that support to to put that into action. So that ranges everything from leaflets, as you said, through to digital assets that can be used on social media. Um, there's a full support network of, of marketing material, and it's um, yeah, it's interesting to hear that you know that good old fashioned leaflet through the letterbox yeah. um, was how you got started, and um, and yeah, and as you, as you said, like over twenty years, word of mouth being now a really powerful yeah. piece. You do a good job by one person, they tell another person, yeah. and so on and so forth. Um, thinking uh, again back to uh, when you first started your uh, business. How quickly were you able to, to build up that client base? You, you know, obviously, it starts with the one client through the leaf through the door, and then you know, kind of scales from there. Can you think back to how quickly you, you grew business? Um, probably about the first year. We, you know, we we uh, probably six months. I suppose it depends in terms of what your base costs are. So yes. we we'd got an office, um, which you know, if you're starting off, you might decide not to have an office or work out of an office. But we had an office. So probably um, we had enough customers within the first year to start making profit. Okay. Um, so months, yeah. profitable in, inside the, the first 12 months. Um, but again, it, 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 I, I just, you know, probably at 18 months, we then took on our second license. Yeah. Um, and obviously then it, it, it grew by, you know, a, a big chunk. Yeah. Um, and so I suppose we've just been kept growing and growing since then, really. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, I, I suppose... Profitability is all really based on 
you know, um, your cost base. You know, if you've got an office, obviously you need to, to cover the costs of things like that in the, in the initial place. Yeah, I, think, I think as you touched on, so you, you're still ambitious. You still want to continue oh, yeah. to grow your uh, yeah. business and you want to continue. So yeah. there's a degree of reinvestment in that business as well, whether that's purchasing yeah. licenses, whether it's purchasing other um, brands from, from within the yeah. Service Master stable, as you, as you have done, um, and continue to put that profitability to work to, yeah. to yeah. fund the, the, big, the bigger picture. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned sort of early uh, in sort of pre pre joining this call about what your typical day looks like now, um, but would you just yeah. mind sharing sort of um, what, yeah. what your day looks like as a as a franchise partner and perhaps how that's changed over the last sort of five years or so as your business is? Yeah, I think um, well, I think initially, as, as you know, if it's a virgin franchise, if it's a brand new franchise, um, a lot of your day is actually going out then dropping leaflets. Um, trying to get new business and and really 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 trying to promote your business to, to, and train your staff I suppose in the first instance to make sure that they're achieving the standards. Um, you know I I would look at Merry Majors and Marks and Spencers of cleaning. Yeah. You know it, it's it's a top level brand um, and it's a top level clean. You know and obviously the customers expect a top level clean for for the what they're paying. So it's making sure that your staff are achieving that. Um, I said initially when you first start, it is just about getting out there, trying to build your business, trying to grow your business. Um, I suppose my day five years ago um, was, if I want to say, it was probably too easy. Okay. Um, you know, and we got our, our current merry maids maybe five years ago was at a stage where I just needed an, another challenge to add to the current businesses that I had. Yeah. Um, and I was probably working from home maybe three days a week, going in office a couple of days a week. Um, and I said, I just needed that challenge. So we've grown since then mm -hmm. yep. um, and probably added another 200K, 250K to our turnover. Uh, more recently, I uh, picked up another office. So now it is more about managing the man office managers now yep. and making sure that they're achieving, you know, both the profit that we should be looking for, but the growth that we're, we're looking for as well. Yeah, I think that's uh, a really uh, key point that you made. There. So Merrimade's opportunity is, is really scalable, isn't yeah. it? In, yeah. in the fact you can start with one territory, you can start with one location, and within that territory and location, you can scale that out to, to be whatever you want it to be. But equally, if you want further geographical presence, then yeah. you can take up um, other licenses, whether that's resales of uh, existing franchise partners that are looking to exit the network or you know, virgin territories and, and white space that's that's on the map at the moment and you can start to build this out to be you know whatever whatever works for you and um it's great to hear that you've you've done that you've, you've added yeah. these territories on and it's become a bit of a, a puzzle piece where you start to yeah to swap it, it, it is yeah so i mean um our, our most recent acquisition is stafford you know i don't live anywhere near stafford but we've i've got a manager that will look after that business and a supervisor over there um, and I'll probably go over once a week, once every couple of weeks yeah. to manage the business um, and the rest of it is ju just remote. So you, you don't necessarily have to even live in the area that you're purchasing. Yeah. Um, you know, you can you have a team that will run that business for you. Yeah, absolutely. If you're prepared to invest in, in the structure and, and have that um, local management presence and the yeah. um, oversight of, of what's going on, then yeah, absolutely. You can be off, you can be off territory. Uh, so... To, to align with the ambition, and again, I know we talked about this prior to um, joining us live, but what are your main focuses then for the rest of 2024 for your Merry Mates business? Um, I think um, my first focus is obviously increased turnover. Um, and I suppose, um, I think you, you alluded to, we did 775, I think, last year. Um, I want to be the first Merry Mates to a million in, in the UK. Yeah. So that's really when my next goal is at. Um, I suppose I've got to make sure it's it done profitably. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, it's not about just buying in new new sort of leads or new new, new customers. You know, it's trying to maintain that, that sort of customer base. Yeah. Um, I think it is, yeah, just trying to keep growing, keep growing. Um, you know, but I said, yeah, my target's got to be a million pounds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I have every confidence that you'll uh, yeah. get there with, oh, yeah. with the resource yeah. that you've got and the structure you've got and just that um, ambition that, that yeah. you've also yeah. got. Um, so looking back over your sort of 20 plus years then experience now as a, as a business owner uh, versus a, as an employee, what do you believe are the key attributes that um, a prospective franchise partner should have or be prepared to develop as they move forward into that journey? Um, 
probably calm. You know, okay. you know, again, you know, things crop up, um, whether it's a, a you know, member of staff that's not well, whether it's, hol- you know, customer holidays, staff holidays. I think you've just got to, you know, look at the, you know, what's going wrong, what's happening, and just be quite calm and look and sort of plan it. Yeah. So I think you've, you've got to be able to have an overview of your business and, and not get caught in the nitty gritty. Yeah. Um, and really sort of, yeah, it's got to be an overview. Um, I think you've got a really man management, mm-hmm. you know, team management. I think that that's a really good sort of um, skill to have yeah. because I think as you grow, your team's going to grow and it's suddenly not big, you know, if you're a virgin area, it might be you and two cleaners, yeah. you know, um, it's you and four cleaners, you and 20 cleaners. And at that stage, you might need an area supervisor, you might need an office manager. So it's not just about managing one or two cleaners it, it's how you move that forward really yeah. and develop the, the team around you yeah perfect the um one of the other uh, common questions that comes up when uh, i'm talking to prospectives is around um the, the sales and business development skill that you need to um sort of hone as you as you start yeah. to get into it it's well and good putting the leaflet through the door to make the phone ring but then what happens between phone ringing and, and customer on board it how, how comfortable were you in the first instance with going out to people, doing the quoting and, and getting them to become customers? If honest, um, because of the background or the industry that I've been in, then you're up on stage and you're talking to people from a stage and things like that. Um, and I've, you know, my wife says I can talk for England anyway. Okay. So um, actually going out to customers is, for me, was, was reasonably easy. Um, I do think, though, that some of the franchisees, it is difficult to go into customers' homes and talk about Merry Maid. And again, we're not, you know, it's not a cheap clean. We are a premium service and people will pay a premium price for a premium service. Um, And it's about being comfortable in terms of this is what we offer. This is what we do. We're good at what we do and it's value for money. Um, And I think sometimes people who are new into the business, that's very difficult to sell your price yeah. to a particular customer when there's so many cheap cleans yeah. you know or mrs mops out there yeah yeah absolutely and that's um one of the things that so for anyone that's uh watching for any franchise partners that come into the network we have a uh, an academy that all of our franchise partners go through in the first instance it's a two-week academy that all franchise partners go through and that's helping the franchise partner come to understand the merry maids brand um, and help to be able to position that so when you are sat in front of a prospective customer and you're having that conversation around what it's going to cost for you to be able to undertake the, uh, the cleans that they require, you feel comfortable, you feel confident um, and can best present yourself and uh, the, the service that you're going to provide for them and then how to onboard them. So we, we cover that off um, as, you, as you go through that two-week academy. But I think some of it as well is, is also just getting out there and doing it. And the yeah. more, and the more yeah. you do it, the more comfortable you get to um, talk to people, present your product, present your um, your your solution to uh, to their to their needs, um, and there are going to be times you get noes, right? I'm sure yeah, there's every yeah, time, yeah. not every time that you guys yeah. go out to, to quote even now where um, people uh, take you up on it. Yes, yeah. not being able to roll with. Yeah, yeah. With I, th- I think you're right. In, but again, I suppose as part of the onboarding process, that that sort of two weeks of, of sort of where they come and learn about merry maids. Um, like recently, we we've had Mercy from from Bedford that's yeah. came over to Dudley, and she's been with us for three or four days. You know to go through the office to go through you know out cleaning with with a team yeah. uh, but she again she's been off with me doing quotes yeah um because again i think that is a big part of learning how to to yeah. sort of you know push your brand forward yeah. and, and get that yes from your customers or your potential customers yeah absolutely absolutely so for, for you um what impact did you say being a franchise partner with a now a profitable and, uh, and successful business um, has enabled you to do outside of um, work. I know we just talked that you're not a great f- fan of going on holiday <laughs> yeah. um, and, and leaving the business, but um, yeah. what is it that it's been able, enabled you to do sort of lifestyle-wise, that things that you couldn't do if you were still employed? Um, so I think if, if you're employed, it's you know four weeks holiday or whatever it is, you, you get that amount of holiday a year. You have to book it when you can book it. You know, you have to fit in with someone else. Um, I suppose as... as an owner of a, of a business um, you can choose when you go on holiday you can choose actually I want Friday off and you you know you don't go in and work Friday yeah. 
Um, I mean, I'm a bit of a workaholic, as you said. So, you know, my wife is quite happy to go on holidays without me, and, and that's great. So I do, I, but I suppose I'm very competitive, and I, I love the business. You know, yeah. I think the business is great. Um, but it's just whether you want to start late, finish early. They're, they're obviously because it's your business in essence. It just gives you that flexibility. Yeah. Um, and I said when I started the business, my my son was nine months old. And we were dropping him at nursery at seven in the morning, picking him up at seven at night, and we knew we had to change something. Yeah. So I think by changing and, and doing this, then it, it was fantastic for us. Um, and my wife, probably after about five years, sort of joined the business as well. Um, right. You know, so she's she works in the business as well. Yeah. Um, probably in a reduced manner now, because you know we we're obviously at a size where we've got that support in the offices to help me, yeah. but she still works in the business now. Yeah, so they're a real sort of fam family yeah. entity. Yeah, Perfect. So if you could roll that clock back now then um, to the beginning of your um, franchisee journey, what would be the one piece of advice that you received um, or you wish that you'd received yeah. that you could impart on somebody now that's thinking about? Oh, oh this is easy. Um, again, I say to, if, if any of the new franchise, as franchisees come to us, it's think big. Okay. You know, always think big. Don't think it's just you and two members of staff. You know, uh, whatever process or whatever you're doing now, don't think it's it's you and just this little business. It's not, you know. Um, it's going to grow to 20 staff, 40 staff, 60 staff, 120 staff. It's going to grow. So think big, you know. Um, have lots of ambition, you know, lots of – there's a league table. I love the league table. I think there's a lot of competitiveness uh, between us and, and the other franchisees. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's definitely. If I was saying to somebody new, think big. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, as you, as Tom mentioned, there the uh, marketing team and brand leader uh, create a uh, regular league table. So each franchise partner gets to see the um, the success of each other's business, and there's always that healthy competition to, yeah. want to be uh, climbing that um, climbing table. And that just goes to echo the um, the level of ambition that we're looking for when we're uh, looking to award licenses to uh, to prospective franchise partners. Uh, we are really selective about who we award licenses to. It's not just the case of being able to award a license to, to anyone just because they have the means to be able to, to invest. We're very protective about that network, um, as, as, you, as Tom mentioned, about having a network that's going to support each other for the benefit of those that are coming in and then those that come in adding value to the, to the network as well. So mm -hmm. everyone continues to, uh, to benefit from that strength. So we are really selective um, around, around who we bring into the network. And also, again, that representation of the brand. We're not a, um, sorry, we are a premium um, service product. And, and therefore, you know, we want franchise partners that buy into that, they believe in that, and that's what they want to be representing when they're out uh, having their maids clean their customers' homes. So um, on that note, we're, you know, we're looking to uh, award six franchise licenses in, in 2024. So following this live, uh, we will be sharing out the recording. Uh, along with contact details for you if you are interested in uh, having a further conversation about how you can be uh, one of those six uh, prospective franchise partners that we look to award a license to uh, in 2024. Now, uh, please do use the chat function uh, should you have any questions uh, as we come to the end of this uh, live, we will start to answer those questions. We have had some questions sent in uh, already, so I will just look to um, go through those now. Uh, and either um, answer them or uh, make other questions to uh, Tom to, to answer. Um, but if you do have any other questions, then please do drop them into the to the chat box, uh, and we'll answer those as we uh, as we get to the, to the end. So, uh, one of the questions that I've had in here from uh, from Tom is is what support do I get? Um, and, and I think um, yourself, Tom, have, have sort of highlighted that in terms of the level of support you get both from the from the existing network uh, of franchise partners, but also from from the marketing support. Um, can you just touch on maybe a little bit about what operational support um, you've benefited from as a, as a franchise partner? Um, I, I think the, the, I mean, obviously we've got Vicky as a, a brand manager, so um, she'll bring in sort of, these are processes that we need to do. Um, but I think a lot of it is, is sort of other, other franchisees, you know, you'll find something that works. Um, you know, I've been up to Inverness, I've been to Blackpool, I've been to visit other sites, um, other merry maids. Again, they've been down to you know my business, and I think it is about taking best practice from other businesses and, and introducing that into yours. Yeah. But I think Vicky, as a as a brand manager, a brand leader, 
Um, again, she's brought a lot of items in and again, it's just trying to bring those best practices in yeah. so that every business is doing the same. So yeah, so from a, from that support perspective, you, we have a uh, brand leader. So we have Vicky, who's out in the field. She's the go-to person for our uh, franchise partners to liaise with around operations. Uh, and then we have the marketing support function. The marketing support function being there to help drive that business development uh, and help to put the brand in front of as many people as they possibly can within the territory uh, and, and help that phone ring, help those leads um, find you that need those cleaning services um, for you to be able to go out and quote. Tom has also asked a, another question here about what happens when I want to, to sell my business. Uh, now, with the um, so one of the misconceptions about a franchise is that it, it's not saleable. Um, you know, I'm going to put all of my time and effort into this. Yes, I'm going to collect uh, an income as I go along, but it's got no value at the end of it. Uh, that's that's not a, a fact. So uh, one of the values of being part of a franchise brand is that it does have a saleable value at the end of it. And again, it's one of those conversations that I have with people very early on in, the, in their journey is about thinking of this as a, as a business asset in, in the same way as you might think of a, a buy-to-let property as an asset that's going to provide you with an income but it has a value at the end. Your franchise business can be very much the same, the mm. same thing. Uh, so as you build up the value of that business over time, as you build up the level of revenue and you uh, have your costs under control and, and you, you're left with your, your net value, um, there are people that will want to uh, buy that business from you in the future. What value that business has in the future is very much a negotiation and, and that's something that um, there are people that can, can support with that on. But there is definitely a value uh, to be had for the franchise businesses. Um, so there is absolutely the ability to be able to, um, to sell that. Um, another question here that's come in from, uh, from Tim is, can I leave the business to my children? Uh, so again, that is another option that you, you could look to um, to do. So if you didn't want to sell your business and you wanted to hold on to uh, the business as an asset within the, the family, um, then, then that's possible. I'm not sure if that's part of your plans. Um, whether your son, I know your son already has business yeah, interests. Yeah. Um, but, um, but, you know, that's absolutely something that can be done. And in some of our other brands, we have um, the franchise partner, stepping more into a senior capacity and they're bringing their children in um, into the business so they can learn the business with the idea that it becomes a legacy transition and they continue to hold the business as a um, as a family asset um, over time so um, but I think there's also the possibility of having a manager again yeah. with my level of business part of one of my options is that I get managers in they run the business when I'm retired and I still gain an income from from that business if I'm retired yeah absolutely so that that's a great point, Tom. So, yeah, there's absolutely the ability there for you to be able to keep hold of the business, um, have a management team that, that pretty much look after your, your day to day, mm. and you still collect an income from that, whether that's for a salary, whether it's for a dividend, however you choose to, to structure that, but you can still take earnings from it. Um, and it can effectively become a you know, your main pension pot or a secondary pension pot or you know, a, a third yeah, pension yeah. pot, you know, whatever, but it can become an, a stream of income for you. Um, in the future, and you can you can continue to to benefit from holding that. Um, and then, uh, final question that I've got here that was was sent in uh, prior to to the live is um, I'm an expert in marketing. What's in it uh, for me uh, by becoming a franchisee? I think if you're an expert in marketing or or any of the other fields that we've touched on, management, um, sales, uh, and business development, they're, they're all key skills that you will utilise as you move forward as a as a franchise partner. Um, Tom's touched on the fact that your team will grow. You'll go from being, um, you know, one or two cleaners in the first instance to suddenly becoming a team of um, cleaners as your business scales. So being able to manage those, recruit those, um, and also manage the um, uh, the just human nature that, that occurs um, from managing people um, is absolutely a, a value. Um, from a marketing point of view, this is very much a sales and marketing business that just happens to do domestic cleaning. So. If you've already got the experience in marketing or sales and development, um, then you will be um, sort of ahead of the curve on that side in terms of being able to promote your business, interact with your your chosen client base, uh, and then onboard them as as clients uh, for your business and, and and see that grow as you um, as you go forward. Um, so that's all of the questions that we had sent in prior to the um, to the live. Um, so. Tom, as we uh, get to sort of closing points, if there was anybody watching this that likes the idea of domestic cleaning, they like the idea of merry maids, um, 
any last piece of advice that you would uh, put to them? Um, I suppose it, to me, it's not just about domestic cleaning. You know, it, to me, it's more of a managed business. Yes. Um, and and uh, you know, you're right. I, Twenty odd years ago, I did look at lots of other businesses out there, lots of other investments. Um, but I just felt that Merry Maids was the right fit in terms of work life balance. And I think as the as you grow your business, I think it, you know you can move away from actually operating yeah. and to more of a managed business. Um, so to me, that that it's not a, a man in a van. It yeah. is more of a managed business. Yeah. It, it's where you can grow and grow and grow. And really, the only ceiling is what you want out of it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that, that's that's a really key point. So this is very much a um, a managed business, as, as Thomas said. It's not about you doing the doing the doing and doing the cleaning yourself. It's very much about instilling yourself as the, the manager in, in this, this franchise opportunity and building out the business um, around you, starting with the maids, and then as you uh, to scale that business, um, other um, assets and, and resources within the business, whether that's supervisors, managers, no. um, or you know, your own sales and marketing function, your own business development function, um, to help you continue to grow that. And the only limitation is, is, you, is you and your um, and your mindset, which I think you know, yeah. comes back great to that piece about Think Big. Um, and there's a great book. Um, I don't know if you read that. Um, called um, Think Big, but um, but yeah, that whole process about um, yeah, setting your sights, setting your sights uh, on the biggest um, objective you can, and then um, continue to work towards that on a yeah yeah on a day by day basis. So as I said, the, sh the recording of this will be shared. Um, if there is anyone that's watching that would like to learn more, then please uh, do reach out to us and make contact. More than happy to have conversations around Merry Maids uh, and also the wider uh, stable of, of brands that we have within Service Master as a franchisor. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've taken value from it. And thank you, Tom, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.